Greetings, folks. Time for a little bit of DIY. Now, you might think that I am a dyed-in-the-wool Nikon fanboy who thinks that there's nothing wrong with the Z9. It's a perfect camera. After all, I own two of them. I have the expert setup guide that runs you through everything on the camera and how to get the most out of it. But I'm not that sick of fantic a fanboy. I've actually done a video in the past about all the different things that I think should have and could have been improved on this camera, and I stand by that. But there's one in particular that I still really get annoyed with. Earlier this year, Steph, Ernest, and I traveled all around Iceland for two weeks filming a bunch of challenges for educating Steph. It was really fun. It was a big challenge. The weather, as always, was difficult to work with. That eight and a half hour course is now live, by the way. You can check that out in the description below. Now, when we were there was in May, which is actually the nicest time of year in terms of weather. And still, if you've been to Iceland, you'd know it can go from sunny to wind that will blow you over with freezing ice in it that's going parallel to the ground in no time. And for that, you want maximum weather sealing. And to be honest, the camera, the lens, overall as it is now, all packed down, I think is really nicely weather sealed and I don't have any concerns with it. However, there's one big issue if you're doing video work and that's your ports. I said this before and people thought that I was just nitpicking over nothing, but if you're actually out there working in extreme conditions, I think it's a really major issue and a really poor and cheap design that only could have saved a dollar per camera, but didn't have the user in mind. And that's the fact that this essentially has two, card, uh, two door covers for five different ports. What I mean by that is, when you lift up the bottom one, it's kind of segmented, but kind of not. There's your USB-C there, and then above that is your HDMI. But it's not flexible enough that you could really open up the battery charging without starting to expose the HDMI. That's not such a big issue. These cameras have such a killer battery life that you don't really need to be USB charging in the field too often. The bigger issue comes with the top port, and this is your microphone up top, then your headphone and your ethernet, and that's a huge port. And this one really isn't segmented at all. So to plug in a microphone, I then need to have my microphone and headphone and ethernet all exposed. Now, this door isn't flexible at all. I can't keep the ethernet covered and open that up. If this were just replaced with a door that like had a flexible seal in the middle there so you could keep that back part sealed, this whole thing wouldn't be an issue. So what we're gonna go to and do today is DIY to weather seal that so that we can have the headphone and mic in use and not have the ethernet wide open for 90 degree angle rain to fill up my camera. And just to show that it's not a Nikon issue or something that can't be gotten around, here's my old Zer D5 that actually died a premature death in Iceland of all places. And take a look at the side of this one. We have one door for our HDMI and ethernet. We have a fully articulated door that does let you separate out an only open microphone or open microphone and headphone. Then you've got two extra doors, each only doing a single job each. So you can really get to just what you want with not having the other ones open. So little rant out of the way. They could have spent an extra dollar or 50 cents on designing a better door layout on this and this wouldn't be an issue. Now, we don't use these little straps, so I'm gonna take this guy off to make my job a little bit easier. I might save it for later, but I never use that strap mount, so probably not an issue. So what we're thinking, we have fun with craft. I have some scissors. I have a razor blade. And thanks to Ernest who went to the markets yesterday, some super heavy duty pro gaff tape. This is the made in USA, crazy thick, top quality one that you can get that pretty much should not leave a residue on anything. Then we have also actually an American duct tape, which is fully waterproof. Now I think the gaff tape is 
95% waterproofed as well, but we can potentially put a layer of the gaff tape so then I have what I want covered, covered, and not leaving a residue on the camera. And then on top of that, put a layer of the duct tape so then it repels the water even better. Now I'm tempted, but I won't, to actually just pull this door off or I tell you what I'm really tempted is to just slice down the middle of it so I can keep the ethernet port cover and then just have the mic and headphone exposed because on our video camera, they're pretty much always in use. But I won't do that. I'm also tempted to just pull this whole piece of rubber out. It would make the operation a lot easier, but I won't do that either. So my goal here is to cut a piece of rubber that I'm able to basically cover off the ethernet port there, leaving enough room for the jack so I might uh, actually have it go all the way out here and just leave circle holes or square holes for those two to go through. Of course, once you've got your headphones and mic plugged in, that port then is, again, 90, 95% weather sealed. And I'll need it to kind of go over the HDMI a little bit. That's not an issue. If we're USB charging overnight, I can just open the bottom up and, you know, make sure that we're not undoing the good work we've done. I'm not the handiest of guys, so let's just have a little go at this and see how we're looking. So in terms of width, this tape is going to be too wide to start off. It's actually the camera I'm filming on right now that we want to do the actual job on. This is my stills camera, but I thought let's do one run through and get a system in place, know that it's working and looking pretty good, and then I'll probably do both cameras. Now, let's see. How wide do I need this to be? Now, rather than making my job unnecessarily complicated, I might even just start by putting a piece down there and then cutting away the bits that I don't need. Yep. Okay, so, great thing. But I'm gonna just do kind of a template one here. I want it to get a bit of that HDMI port, so it's gonna be around. We have gotta leave this multi-selector exposed. Now, yes, this is gonna look like a dog's breakfast, but I'm gonna do the next one to try and have it be nice and neat. So that would cover around there. This one, we need it to go around that little port there, but I want it to have as much to stick down as I possibly can. So let's use the razor blade on this one. Now, I really don't want to cut my ports or anything here. So, something like this. Yep. And then around there, you know what? This actually isn't too bad anyway. And where does this guy clip down? Where's the actual clip? I think it is at the top. So, I probably, let's see, if I'm wrapped in there, can it still clip? Not properly. Get a little cut out for that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So it's gonna be something like this shape. Now I would really like, you can actually get little rubber plugs. We're gonna keep looking for them that are Basically like this, it's the, the jack for an ethernet port, but it's just the, a little rubber plug. We couldn't find one, but they don't fully weather seal it. They just kind of to cover it, but it would be nice to have something there so that that open hole was actually sitting up almost flush with the body. That would make it easier to tape in. I also tempted getting one of those little silica gel packs that you get in snacks or clothes and trying to stuff it in that hole so that if any moisture did get in, it's kind of covered. But so this is kind of where we want it to be. The door's still working. I can still get access to my uh, USB-C there. Now, this isn't a, you know, leave it in the gale force, wind and rain for all day and not think about it again. We'll still be trying to be careful with it, but at least, you know, some water hitting that, it's going to have a lot more protection than just having the port completely open. So that's basically the shape that we want. Now that we have that, let's just take a look at it here. Straighten that little flap out. 
Okay, so something like that. Now, I wanna do it a second time to get it so then the tape is nice and fresh and hasn't been, had its adhesiveness taken. Okay, so keep that one straight. So I have a feeling that we may end up doing this each day and then each night letting it dry out again. But that's basically the shape and then let's see if we have it right in here. Got to make sure I'm not stopping these doors from covering as well. Otherwise that's kind of counterproductive. But that's kind of getting it to where we need it to be. Again, this would have just been so simply solved if they had just put a flexible door that you could keep part of the door closed and the other part open. So that looks pretty good. Now, if we wanted to put a layer of duct tape on top as well, although I guess I probably want it to be a little bit bigger so it can cover off the sides. And how tall do you need to be? Ah. DIY is not my normal specialty or cup of tea. So cut that corner out and then put a little slit in there to go around the door. So again, the reason for doing this, two layers can only help. The gaff tape is sure to come off nice and clean. Um, but this one being a little bit more plasticized finish is going to repel water more. So we've got two layers that the water has to get through and give that a little cut out there. Um, uh, we can do it like that. Two layers that the water has to get through. Top layer is more waterproof and the bottom layer is not gonna leave a residue on my camera when I get back to more normal climates we should be all set. So now we have that kind of still in place. We have all of that. We just need a gap to be able to get our headphones through. Just putting a little cross shape in here. So one in. Okay, and microphone. So that should pretty much do it. There's the close up. I'll do it again on the real camera to get it a little bit neato. So hopefully it will last for a day or two. But then I'm getting, no, probably every day. Every day that it's been raining, we'll come back when we're doing the cleaning up, backing up, charging everything undo the tape, redo the tape for, you know, maybe leave it out overnight to, in case there's any drying out to be done, um, and then redo it to be able to go out for the following day. But I definitely feel more comfortable with that. I would certainly feel even more comfortable if I just had the old fashioned style where it had dedicated doors for them. Sorry, I am gonna keep harping on this because I just think it's cheap and poor design to have it with only two doors on a camera that's clearly designed for hybrid work doing 8K, 60 raw in camera, blah, blah, blah. This is a hybrid camera. It's a fully weather sealed camera, but not if you have a massive hole in the side of your camera when you need to do any kind of video work. Let me know. I would genuinely like your feedback. I know the DIY crew are gonna tell me that I've done this in a terrible way. And I'll let you in on a secret. I'm doing this because I want your advice. So if you have a suggestion on better ways to do it, let us know. We've got uh, about 10 days in Iceland in the middle of winter that we're heading off for in two days time. And we're expecting really crazy weather. So I want these to be as safe as possible. Let me know any suggestions you have, any feedback you have. And if you haven't already, check out my Z9 setup guide. It is linked in the description below. Cheers guys, I'll see you soon.
Hey guys, welcome to Educating Stuff, where Matt is going to be teaching me all about photography. Now, whether you're a beginner photographer or looking to brush up on your existing skills and take it to the next level, this course has so much to offer. We break down all the fundamentals into small bite-sized pieces and give you practical exercises you can do around the home or in your backyard without any special equipment to be able to really reinforce the learnings. Then we bring it all together with a series of on-location challenges, such as street photography. a series of portrait challenges, including an off-camera flash shoot. We also head to Iceland and do bird photography. Landscape photography. and a full boudoir shoot. This comprehensive eight and a half hour program is jam packed with fun content. You join us as I teach Steph in real time, both theory and practical indoors and on location. I give you practical exercises to reinforce all of the learnings and you get to see Steph work through the challenges at the same time you're doing it for yourself. And best of all, you don't need any special equipment to complete the assignments, just your camera and lens. This course is great for anyone who wants to learn photography that could follow along with me or for those that are teaching their friends photography, you guys could follow along with Matt because he is a great teacher. Thank you. It is a different skill knowing how to do something as opposed to knowing how to teach something. So breaking it down into small steps, giving lots of exercises along the way that reinforce the learnings, it really will, I think, help those wanting to start out in photography or take their photography up to the next level, as well as those who want to learn how to teach others. Just as Steph said, the course is now live. So join Steph and I, take your photography to the next level or learn how to become mm -hmm. a teacher. All the info is below. If you have any questions, get in touch with me via the contact form.